In the previous lecture, we've had a look at the so-called Cho test, which allows us to check for the structural stability in the parameters. So whether, the whether there has been some structural break in our data set. So in the previous case, we used the F test to answer that question. However, uh, using we can do this much, much, much more quickly just using the method of the dummy variable. So let's revisit the example we had in the previous lecture. So suppose we've got some data on disposable personal income and personal savings for the United States for the following period. And we would like to check whether the variables in question have been affected by the recession which took place in 1982. However, uh, if you remember in the previous, um, in the previous case, and that was impossible to say whether the difference in the two regressions was because of differences in the intercepts or the slopes. So let's have a look at those, uh, those regressions once again. So if, um, so if we look at these equations and here on the graph, so if the, the recession, let's say, is not statistically significant, that means that the intercepts and uh, the slopes are the same. So what we get is a coincident, coincident regressions, right? So those meaning that those two regressions are exactly the same. However, if the difference in the results comes from the difference in the intercepts, that means that lambda one and gamma one are not the same. So they are being different. And what we get is actually parallel regressions. So in this case, the intercepts are the same where the slopes lambda 2 and gamma 2 are exactly the same. So actually those were the parallel regressions, right? So it's, uh, the intercepts are different, however, the slopes are the same. So in this case, this graph indicates uh, the case where the slopes are the same, meaning that x has the same effect on y in both periods. However, the intercepts, the mean values of y, are different in two different periods. It might happen that the intercepts are the same, meaning that the mean value of the dependent variable is the same in both periods. However, the effect that x uh, has on y is different in two different periods, indicating that lambda 2 and gamma 2 are different. So this will be the case of concurrent regressions, where the slopes are the same. So lambda 1 and gamma 2 are equal to each other. So we've got the same intercept. However, the slopes are different. So the regressions go in, so they, they start in the same point, but they go in opposite directions. And this case, once again, indicates that x has a different effect on y in different periods. And the fourth case is then when both the mean value of lambda and gamma are of lambda one and gamma one are different. So the mean value of y are different in two periods, and the mean effect of x on y is also different in both periods, meaning that lambda two is different from gamma two. And this is the case for the dissimilar regressions. And here we've got a graph of that. So the intercepts are different, and the slopes are also different. So in order to check this hypothesis, in order, in order to see which graph is the correct one, we can run the following regression. So y is savings, uh, alpha 1, this is the intercept, alpha 2 dt, so dt, this is the dummy variable. We take the value of 1 for observations in the second period and 0 for the observations in the first period. Beta 1 xt, where xt is income and beta 1 measures the mean effect of x on y, and b2 is multiplied by dt xt. So this is the so-called interactive term, right? So um, this, term measure, this term measures if there has been the change in the effect of x in the second period, whether it has been statistically significant. So, once again, let's revisit this example. So the mean savings function for the first period from 70 till 81 is the following. So in this period, the dummy variable is equal to zero. 
So what is left of the regression is the following, alpha 1, this term disappears, this term disappears, so alpha 1 plus beta 1 xt. So this is the mean savings function for the first period. When it comes to the second period, this is the, uh, this is the time when the dummy variable is equal to 1. So alpha 1 plus alpha 2, this will be the new intercept, and the new slope coefficient will be beta 1 plus beta 2. So as you can see, if it turns out that both alpha 2 and beta 2 are statistically significant, this will be the case for the dissimilar regressions where the intercepts and slopes are different. However, if it happens that only this uh, only alpha 2 is statistically significant, whereas beta 2 is not statistically significant, this will be the case for different intercepts and the same slopes, so the parallel regressions. If it happens that now alpha 2 is statistically insignificant, but beta 2 is statistically significant, this will be the case when we've got the same intercept, alpha 1, but different slope coefficients, which will be the case for concurrent regressions. And if it happens that both alpha 2 and beta 2 are statistically insignificant, that means that the intercept and the slope coefficients are the same for both periods, and this is the case of coincident regressions.